Hey everybody, Cabs here. Have you ever skimmed through Netflix and tried to find something to watch? You might even press play on one movie or show, only to X out of it two to five minutes later. As I tried to clean in my living room, I needed something to play in the background. I stumbled on an old gem I'd heard before but never really seen. The film was Blazing Saddles. I was surprised how entertaining, engaging, and funny Blazing Saddles still is. But I also wanted to know why. Out of all the shows and films on Netflix, how does this film still hold up 50 years later? What has changed since 1974? And could Blazing Saddles ever be remade today? For lack of a better word, Blazing Saddles had a very troubled development. Westerns, as a genre, had all but died out by the 1960s ushering in the age of spaghetti westerns, which have now become classics. In terms of profitable genres of that period and today, westerns have given way to sci-fi, heavy drama, superhero films, and disaster movies. Warner Brothers hired a multi-talented and highly successful comedian, songwriter, playwright, and filmmaker by the name of Mel Brooks to direct the western. However, before Mel took the job to direct the film, he comprised a team consisting of Andrew Bergman and Richard Pryor to help tighten up the script, which, which was originally called Tex X, a homage to Malcolm X. Brooks fortunately changed the title to Blazing Saddles and wanted to hire Richard Pryor in the lead role as Sheriff Bart. Warner Brothers rejected this idea because of Pryor's ongoing drug addiction, which the studio considered the legendary writer, actor, and comedian as uninsurable. So, Pryor suggested a friend, who was a gifted actor, to fill in for him, and that actor's name was Cleavon Little. Cleavon is the main reason Blazing Saddles still works, and I could not imagine watching the movie with anyone but him in the role. Cleavon effortlessly and switch from a suave, refined gentleman to a slapstick character in a blink of an eye. Mel Brooks also asked John Wayne if he could play the role of Jim, the Waco Kid. But John Wayne felt the role was too blue for his style. So the studio hired Byron Barr, AKA Gig Young, who's known to be a competent second lead in Hollywood, as well as unfortunate alcoholic. However, on the first day of filming, Young collapsed on the set of Blazing Saddles due to his alcoholism, and his role went to Gene Wilder. Blazing Saddles is a story of how a landowner by the name of Hedley Lamar, not Hetty, <laughs> out of desperation to move the dumb inhabitants away from their land, hires a black sheriff. However, when the black sheriff proves he is more than capable of not only doing his job, but saving the town. Lamar stoops down to hiring killers, a German showgirl, and other nonsensical, hilarious ploys to destroy Sheriff Park. A legendary burnt-out gunslinger, Jim, the Waco Kid, witnesses how the rough hill Sheriff Bart has to climb and decides to help him protect the town. What is remarkable about the story of Blazing Saddles is the characters and the gags that proliferate throughout the entire film happen in such quick succession, you have to slow down and catch yourself when you pass by a message hidden within the gag. The gags are lowbrow, but they range in from fart jokes <laughs> to racial gags. That on the surface may seem problematic in today's lens, but refreshing while watching the film today. Mel Brooks called Blazing Saddles a Jewish Western with a black hero. The film has traces of Looney Tunes gags throughout, specifically when Sheriff Bart dresses up as a candy gram deliverer to deliver sweets to Mongo, the big bad killer in the film, played by pro football Hall of Famer 
Alex Carrot. Mongo opens the package and explodes in his face, knocking him unconscious. The bit is played up like Bugs Bunny cartoon with the Looney Tunes theme and all. A lot has ch changed and hasn't changed since 1974. Hollywood still has no idea what will be a hit or not, despite all the technology and data at our fingertips compared to 1974. While researching for this video, I stumbled on a trivia gem that hit me like a ton of bricks. And quote, when the film was first released, first screened for WB execs, almost none of them laughed and the movie looked to be a disaster that the studio would not release. However, Mel Brooks quickly set up a subsequent screening for the studio's employees. When these regular folks laughed uproariously throughout the movie, WB finally agreed to take a chance on releasing it. The social and political climate has changed to be more accepting and inclusive to some regards, but those changes have not always been for the better. And in some regards, overcorrections or lazy attempts to be inclusive without any justification or context on why have sometimes damaged the film and shows. There have been satirical films since Blazing Saddles since then. Films like The Blackening, They Clone Tyrone, Sorry for Bothering You, Meet the Blacks, and the highly successful Barbie movie all have had varying degrees of success and recognition. But I do not see myself rewatching any of the films 50 years from now. And that's okay. That's not to say other people will not watch those movies 50 years from now. I believe that a lot of today's offerings when it comes to satire either have too little comedy and a lot of messaging, or a lot of comedy and not a lot of messaging. And above all else, they should be entertaining. Blazing Saddles stood out because while watching it, I understood the messages and it had a balance of comedy and social messaging without beating me over the head with either aspect. I was also engaged in the film despite it being a Western from 1974. I also like the use of practical set pieces, which seems to be falling out of style in today's standards, where we're often using systems like the volume. The short answer is no, but maybe. A lot of the themes would need to be recontextualized for today's audience. Superhero, superhero films are westerns of today. It seems like the show The Boys is taking care of the dark satirical elements from the point of view. But who's to say if today's audience will be up to see a satirical western? Maybe. I'm noticing there's also a censoring or removal of problematic elements in today's stories and characters, specifically, specifically in today's adaptations. And this has become the norm. I'm looking at you, Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. I have no problem with adaptations that add something to the source material. However, I do have a huge problem when adaptations take away elements from the source material. And instead of adding more nuance or richer experiences, they come off as hollow and bleached out. I'm looking at you, Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender. Movies like Blazing Saddles have a wasabi effect. They are a palate cleanser, strong, abrasive, but necessary to enjoy whatever you consume next. We need more movies like Blazing Saddles and American Fiction to hold up mirrors to our absurdity. Could Blazing Saddles be made today? No. But if it is made, it should be written and directed as raw as possible, with a balance of comedy and messaging, if it's going to have a lasting appeal generations from now. Well, those are my opinions. Um, if you agree, if we don't agree, uh, feel free to share it, comment below, feel free to give the video a like. Um, I really appreciate all the support. And I'll catch you next time. Cabbage out.